Welcome back, everyone, to our very special series on Research Week's podcast at the EACD Slovenia 2023. And today I have a number of people who I'm interviewing. So we've already interviewed a few. And right now we're going to be talking to Akhlam Zidane, who's a PhD candidate from McGill University. Welcome. Thank you so much. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> now, yesterday, actually, we met at the welcome ceremony, I think, and we were just talking about some of your work. It was really intriguing. And I was like, we've, we've just got to have a chat to you about your work. You presented yesterday for an oral presentation. And, and the title of that is Understanding the Effectiveness of Transition to Adult Interventions for Adolescents with Disabilities. It's a realist informed mixed method systematic review. Uh, and there's, there's so many key words in there that attracted me to this. Obviously, uh, you know, transition to adults is great. You know, we, we need to do more about that. But from your perspective, particularly as a PhD candidate, something drew you into this. What made you come into this area? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. And um, what made me come to this area? So I am a physiotherapist by, uh, by training. Uh -huh. And um, how I got in this field, um, one of the reasons is my youngest sister. She's, uh, she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And I started her journey, uh, like we started together the journey right. of uh, rehabilitation. Yeah. And what is that? What is yeah. physiotherapy? And at that time, physiotherapy was... Um, kind of still uh, very early, like uh, in the very early stages in Libya. Mm. So um, because I'm coming from Libya. Mm -hmm. um, so this is how I introduced it to the field. Wow. And literally her journey started to be my journey. Wow. And um, last year she uh, finished high school yep. and she was planning to to like, what is the next? Yeah. What I wanted to do next. Big questions. Yeah. And I remembered when I was in her, in, in her like, uh, the same time, uh -huh. it wasn't that, it was difficult. It was like a lot of like, what is next? It's a new phase and all of that. But for her, the experience was kind of different because of yeah. her disability yeah. and uh, like um, she has a vision impairment. Mm -hmm. uh, she has also like uh, motor um, hemiplegia. So okay. like, you know, uh, motor impairments and yeah. all of that. Because of all of this, She's really interested to be in the medicine field, mm. but she was like, because of my arm, I cannot be oh. successful. So, okay, what I can do now? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, it's it's for us as a like a healthy person uh, is asking what I wanted to do, mm. and for them is what can I do? Wow, the two different questions, aren't they? It's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 and. Uh, Especially when the system is not helping you, yeah, the, the sure. healthcare system, the education system is mm. not uh, um, accommodated mm. to accept you, to welcome you. Yeah. So this is the case back in Libya, but in North America, because I'm doing my PhD in um, at McGill University in Canada, uh -huh. um, they have a system um, transition to inter to adulthood interventions. Yeah. Um, so. Like one of these studies uh, that came, I, I've noticed that there are many systematic reviews. Uh -huh. They're talking about it's very, it's very effective. Uh -huh. But you still see that there are, sometimes they implement it and it's not reaching or um, achieving the goals. Right. So okay. I was like, well, we, we need... It's not the question if it's effective or not, because yes. most of the time it's effective. But why, in some cases, it's not effective? Ah. Why they what they do uh, like uh, what they do are wrong? Yeah. So to understand that, especially it's a it's a kind of a complex intervention because it's like uh, full of multi layers. Yeah. It's not just um, uh, one dimension. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's you have to consider the individual yeah. uh, uh, reasoning and yeah. why if like uh, the the patient the child wanted to to um, they have a motivation to to move to the next step or not mm. um, the parents also the system is there mm. educational and healthcare system available yeah. uh, so it's a lot of levels yeah so it's complex. It's, yeah. And that's the thing. Like, it doesn't mean that it's complex. It means we can't tackle it. There are steps that we need to take, right, to, exactly. to be able to address it. And so I guess what you've done here in a systematic review to actually look at the literature is a really important step to be able to start the conversation and think about what steps we need to take. So within this systematic review itself, what did you find? Like, when you, we're talking about the understanding, the effectiveness of transition to adult interventions, what did that look like? So 
because I wanted to understand the effectiveness, mm -hmm. I decided to go with a realist analysis. Uh -huh. So it's a systematic review. It's a review. Uh, we're reviewing, uh, reviewing the literature, but I am having... Um, that realistic uh, uh, eyes uh, mm -hmm. or lenses where I'm looking at the intervention at uh, uh, like different level and it's not like it's a, it's a component, mm -hmm. uh, an outcome and, and context yeah. and the, the mechanism, yeah. all of this. The implementation and aspect of exactly, it. Like can we put this actually into practice? How the context yeah, can... Sure. Uh, trigger a specific yeah. mechanism yeah. result in a specific sure. outcome. Okay. So this is how I looked at it uh, through this uh, systematic review. And um, um, I discovered that, first of all, the context, most of the people, they think that context is where you implement the intervention. Uh -huh. But this is not just the context. This is part of the context. The okay. setting is a part of the context. Okay. But the context, it's more than this. It is uh, where you, you implemented the, the intervention, uh, also the the social uh, values, uh, the the rules that's available uh, there, the environment that's mm. implemented uh, where the the, um, the intervention was uh, uh, implemented, mm -hmm. um, it's it's also the reasoning of people um, who the stakeholders who involved in that intervention, how they. Their, their responses were um, toward that intervention. Sure. Okay. Um, they believed in it or not. Yeah, okay. They felt like they have the support enough mm -hmm. to commit or mm -hmm. not. Okay. Um, they believe that it might be there is a change or not. Okay. All of all of this, it's part of the context. Right, yes. So this is how I looked at it. Mm -hmm. And um, we found that it's really um, you have to tackle different level at the same time. You sure. cannot just tackle, for example, organizational level by preparing resources and that's it. Yeah. You need to prepare uh, and provide resources mm -hmm. uh, for transitioning to adulthood mm -hmm. um, by giving training um, like uh, for the staff, the, the teachers okay. uh, at the school. So we need to think about how... So me as a physiotherapist, say I'm working with someone, I need to be thinking about who's involved in that person's life and educating people all around that, all around them. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's not just about the patient. I'm applying yeah. something to the patient and yeah. it's done. Yeah. No, it's like um, it's also about how the patient believe mm. in this system. Mm. Uh, what is actually the first question they should ask what is the patient needs? Yeah. That child. Yeah. That child. What does that child need? Yeah. Um, how they look at themselves in the future, yeah. where they see the, themselves, or yeah. at least like, like at least like the the couple uh, of years that's coming. You know. Mm. Um, so you're thinking that this needs to start as a conversation much before they actually transition to adult. We yeah. need to really start those conversations. Exactly. Early. You cannot apply something yeah. when the child doesn't believe that they yeah. can make something. Yeah, because sure. at the end of this study, we discovered that the mechanism, the most important mechanism that uh, resulted in a successful transition to adulthood mm -hmm. is that the self-confidence, mm -hmm. um, the confidence and the self-advocacy of the child. Sure. And uh, they're, they're, they were able to believe in themselves mm -hmm. and to say when they find a job or uh, going to uh, the college, they're, they're able to say like, I need these accommodations. Okay. I yeah. have this disability. Yeah. And... I believe that I need these okay. accommodations. Yeah. I need them. Yeah, sure. So that self advocacy. Wow, that's a, such a big. That's a. That's a big thing to be able to develop into someone. But again, that doesn't start and happen overnight. That happens oh, no. over many years. So I think as you know, pediatric therapists or clinicians working, I guess you know we can all have a big role to play in that, listening to their needs and helping them to advocate for themselves early on. It's true, yeah. Be, yeah. You yeah. need to raise, it's the skills that you need to raise in the child yeah. that they have the right to ask yeah. for what they need. Right. It's not yeah. something, it's not like... Um, it's not the parent. Exactly. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's and the person. And also considering involving the parents early. Mm, sure. Try to, to hear from the parent yeah. what they need mm. to help the child mm. because the child will spend most of the time with the parents more than the community course, outside. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to understand the needs of the parents and yeah. how they can help you yeah. to reach sure. these goals together. Yeah. Um, so like there are many different levels that yeah. needs to be considered uh -huh. to help these children, like, you know, to, yeah, to move and right. to transit smoothly. Smoothly, to yeah. That's the, the key, step. isn't it, to yeah. actually help them with that. Um, so, okay, well, we've 
spoken about a fair bit there. There's a lot to put in. In, in a systematic review, there's always going to be a lot of things that come out. Oh, especially it's a mixed method. <laughs> it's so mixed there's method, yeah. plenty to have a quality quite a lovely, <laughs> lovely method. So what will be your number one take home for clinicians who are listening right now about what they can do to support children based on the information that you gathered in the systematic review? What's that one point that you want to drive home? The first message uh, I will say start with the child. Okay. Um, work in these skills. Mm-hmm. Uh, make them believe in themselves right. that they have the right to to self advocate. Yep. To ask what they want. Yep. And they don't feel shy. They don't feel um, that they are burdened because they're not burdened. Yeah. This they have to start from this small system. Mm-hmm. After that, when the child, they feel like they believe in themselves and yeah. they believe that they have the right to make changes, they will ask for these yeah. changes from the organizational or sure. the other levels. And they will start to make a change by improving the economy because they have jobs. They are involved in the community. Yeah. And we need it's to see them lasting. in the co- community yeah. because this will help to raise disability awareness. Yep. Um, because one of the the, the, the issues that... Um, uh, like uh, the, I read in in these um, included studies, mm. they are not able to integrate in the community, especially with their peers, mm. because their peers they don't know that much about their disability, mm. so they prefer just to isolate themselves yeah. from them. Yeah, sure. But when they did uh, interventions where peer mentoring consultations were one of the most important factors of that intervention, they discovered that the healthy. Uh, or the, the their peers, they said that now we know about their disabilities mm. and where their needs, mm. and we're not scared anymore. Mm. And we wanted to be engaged with them, yeah. and they were so happy to be helping and to be there and to to make them understand, for example, like uh, the 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 environment of the university, um, the rules of the university, and to be friends with them. Mm. So that's why it's another thing that I really recommend. Involve um, other uh, students, other children, other uh, other um, adolescents early. Yeah, that's great. To, to have that integration, the community integration. You're so right. We're hearing that more and more, aren't we, about integrating and thinking about the whole picture. That's been a big movement lately. You know, when you look at where the literature is headed and what you're finding here is consistent with that. And that's just another layer, another thing to be able to say, this is, this is really important. So yeah. congratulations on your work. Congratulations on doing your PA. HD. It's a lovely, <laughs> lovely journey. So it was really lovely to meet you today and, and to share your research today. So thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, to all our listeners, remember, I'll put links to this for you on our website, researchworks.net. And uh, stay tuned for more because there's just so much more to come. So enjoy the series and I'll chat to you soon. Bye. Bye.